The end of the creation is that the creation might glorify God. Now what is glorifying God, but a rejoicing at that glory He has displayed? True religion, in great part, consists in holy affections. God is the highest good of the reasonable creature. The enjoyment of Him is the only happiness with which our souls can be satisfied. The happiness of the creature consists in rejoicing in God, by which also God is magnified and exalted. Result, to study the scriptures so steadily, constantly, and frequently, as that I may find, and plainly perceive, myself to grow in the knowledge of the same. Resolution 1. I will live for God. Resolution 2. If no one else does, I still will. The way to heaven is ascending, we must be content to travel uphill, though it be hard and tiresome, and contrary to the natural bias of our flesh. Prayer is as natural an expression of faith as breathing is of life. The best, most beautiful, and most perfect way that we have of expressing a sweet concord of mind to each other is by music. Godliness is more easily feigned in words than in actions. Many persons, when they pray, do not think of God but only of the thing they are praying for. The soul that is sanctified and Christianized is a new nature, a new creature, and so is fit to be with God. If the grace of God should leave us, we would quickly turn every good gift into a curse. The way to be brought to a true repentance is to have a sight of God's mercy and goodness to others. God's love is a pure and holy flame, and not a mere natural affection. To go to heaven, fully to enjoy God, is infinitely better than the most pleasant accommodations here. We ought to think of the goodness of God as the greatest motive to repentance. The first and greatest work of a Christian is about his heart. The best evidence of our love to God is obedience to his laws. The true believer is one who feels himself to be the least of all saints. The only way to avoid being deceived is to become intimately acquainted with the truth. The greatest difficulty in conversion is to win the heart to God. There is no way that leads to true godliness but the way of self-denial. A true Christian is a person who has not only righteousness imputed to him but imparted to him. The gospel is the proclamation of the glorious love and mercy of God to sinners through Jesus Christ. We must always be diligent to avoid everything that would hinder our progress in the path of holiness. Christ is the foundation of all spiritual blessings and God's purpose is to glorify him by bestowing these blessings on his people. True Christian fortitude consists in strength of mind, through grace, exerted in two things, in ruling and suppressing the evil and unruly passions and affections of the mind, and in steadfastly and freely exerting and following good affections and dispositions, without being hindered by sinful fear or the opposition of enemies. All true obedience to God is founded on the knowledge of God.